What color do I want the actual mountains to be? What are they made of? I think I want to make these mountains like big, rocky, you know, like pinnacles and real mystical and real dramatic horizons. I want it to look like stone. I think that that would be, you know, if you're holding the rock in your hand, it would be like beige brown. But here's the thing. There's going to be two basic colors. There's going to be the shadow and there's going to be the light. So the shadow is going to have to be bluer because it's in a blue atmosphere and therefore getting indirect blue light. So now we're towards a bluish brown. In a bluish brown, that's mixing opposites, that's gray. So the mountains therefore are going to be probably the grayest thing in the whole picture. The shadow, that is. Blue and watch, I'll mix it to the side so that we can just watch the process here. Put my three primaries, I'm gonna mix that together then add white because that is way too dark for distant mountains. That is pretty gray, but it's a little bit on the green side. So I'll go ahead and add more red. And uh, <laughs> it's probably too much red. It's also too dark still, so I'm adding red and white. Okay, that's all right. That's a pretty good color for shadow, but I think it should be bluer. Remember, we're just going for almost a straight gray. That's pretty gray right there. Now I'm gonna add white to get the right lightness. The further away it is, the more it'll be the same color as the sky. So this gray will get not only lighter, but it'll get bluer as it gets further away. In order to make it look like it's way back there, I'll make it just darker than the clouds shadows so that it looks like the next thing in the picture closer than the clouds. All right, now I think I, I really like this color, so I'm gonna start laying out my mountain range. So, I want these to be big mountains. So, I can't just do it exactly like the thing I painted over, that's too predictable. So what I'll do, I'll take some blue and white. Oh man, my mountains are going way up here. And then once again, look, I can use my finger. I just do my finger in this water. And if I just kind of rub it along here, I get a real soft fade. That's kind of fun. I can do the same thing up here. Straight up rock. Flip the brush. Oh, I've been practicing that. Okay. A lot of Arizona influence there. Let's go up into this cloud now. Oh, it's going right in there. I'm going to go in here. Coming up under this guy. See some bright lights right here. Come down right here. Come I'm gonna use my finger fade trick again. Smear that guy in. Smear this in. See, Bob Ross never did that. He's still better than me, though. This one coming in front of that cloud. See by massaging the bristles of the brush, see how I'm like 
that helps me get sharper edges, you know. If I just slowly kind of do that, I can get, get that edge nice and sharpened. It's so fantastical. Look at that. It's like a magical land. It needs a, needs a little castle and dragon. Oh, I'll do a dragon. I'll do a dragon in this one. I'm going to add a white and blue down here because once again I'm pulling my sky color or atmosphere color down here to create a settling atmospheric effect. Now the, the cool thing about blue is that it recedes, naturally recedes away if especially if you have warmer colors surrounding it. Just like this blue looks further behind these bright clouds, anywhere I put blue, especially if it's a gray blue, I mean if I put a real intense blue it's definitely gonna look like it's floating out in the front somewhere, but this muted blue down here, not only is that trying to just be accurate to the atmosphere, but it also creates a deep effect just because it's blue. But I'm fading it to this lighter bluer color as this goes down. Like there's a fog in the air and it's settling in the valleys of these hills. I actually kind of like the way it's not mixed, you know, these streaks. That's kind of cool. I wonder if I could kind of play off of that and just keep that texture in there. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Let's do some highlights on these. Make them look like the light's coming and hitting them. I'll get a clean brush again. It's always important to use the appropriate size, you know. For me, the appropriate size is always a little bigger than the typical appropriate size. But, you know, because it helps me go faster. I think I want to get, like, some of these details in these guys. So, so I'm going to go with uh, this. I'm going to go with this one and a half inch guy here. Now, the light, as we've established, these are grayish brown rocks. So, orange light from the sun hitting grayish brown rocks, all of a sudden, they are going to become orangish brown and brighter. So, let's make, we are, you know, anytime you hear the word brown, that means red, yellow, blue. So here's my blue, yellow, red. I don't get obsessed with getting the right amount on there initially because my process is all about just looking at it and seeing what I want to change. Okay, definitely to yellow. Opposite to yellow is purple, so I'll just get my magenta. Magenta is definitely more towards red than it is towards blue, so I'll also add a little bit of blue. So by adding the opposite, I start getting rid of the yellow. Now that actually is probably the right color balance, but it's way too dark. So I gotta add white now. And it'll probably be, oh, I kinda like that. That's a pretty good color right here. It's probably pretty good. Let's see. Oh, still too dark. Okay, let's try this one. A Little bit lighter will be good. Okay, so now I've got this bright tone. So let's just start making some big rocks come down. And you're like, big rocks is just a line, but because I've really, because I've really dialed in the color, you know, no matter where I put it, this is going to create the look of light against shadow, just because the color is appropriate. And again, I'm going all on the, more to the right side of everything. That's kind of fun. I think I'll make like a ridge coming down here. So if there's a ridge coming down here, then this side of it's going to be lit with my light color. So I'll just, where I'm imagining, right where I'm imagining that ridge, I'm going to start making these yeah, lines kind of going down the hill. I'll make a couple of little horizontal lines in here, you know. Like, like the tops of some flatter areas. Of course, I gotta make it kind of 
fading out as it gets near this foggy point. This is where the texture of the wall comes in handy. It's already a bumpy texture, so just dragging it fast across that texture. I used to always watch Bob Ross, the guy with the big red afro on PBS Saturday morning. He'd always say, you know, he coined the phrase happy mistake. And he'd just take whatever kind of went wrong. I guess if you're in a live studio, then you want to be able to make them. <laughs> you're not going to start over, but man, I'm not like that. If it doesn't go the way I plan, I don't care how good it looks. <laughs> You can see I've got this mountain range back here just by using two colors. Color for my light, color for my shadow. And because they appropriately correspond in their balance of orange to blue, it has a very natural look. 